Hi everyone. In this video, we will solve the ordinary differential equation problem from CSI Net 2011 December exam. Okay. And in the last video, we have solved uh, 2011 June problem from the ordinary differential equation. So let's start today's video. Here is the first question, question number 41. Here the question is let y1x and of solutions of these given equations. And the limit is x is from closed interval AB, US functions on closed interval AB. If x0 and x1 with x of the solution y1x in open interval AB, then we have four options. We have to choose any one of these four options. Okay. Now, in this question, there are some mathematical keywords. First one is fun fundamental set of solutions. There are some properties of fundamental set of solutions. Suppose here y1 and y2 are fundamental set of solutions. Then if y1, y2 are fundamental sets, number two, y1, y2 will be linearly independent. Since y1, y2 are linearly one, y2, that will be number three is y1, y2 cannot have common zero. And number four is y1, y2 cannot have repeat parties. We can solve this problem. How? Let's check the problem. If you see, let's start from option B. Option B is saying that y1 x is equals to x minus x0 whole square p0 x. From this form, what we can say? y1 x is equals to x minus x0 whole square p0 x. That means we know that x0 is a 0 of the whole square. That means the order of the 0 x0 is 2. That means x0 repeated 0. Right? But according to the fun property of fundamental set of solutions, so from here we can say that option B is incorrect. Option C is saying that y2x has no zeros in open interval x0, x1. Then with x0 less than x1 are consecutive zeros of y1x. So these two are consecutive zeros of y1x. And we know that between two consecutive zeros of two, that means y2 the one zero interval x0 x1 okay but here given y2x has no zero in open interval x0 x1 so option c is incorrect option d is saying that y2 x0 is equals to zero but y2 dash x0 is not equals to zero okay here given x1 these two are consecutive zeros if x0 is a zero of y1 then we can say that will be equals to zero because x0 is a 0 of y1, right? So if y1, x0 is equal to 0, and by the property of fundamental set of solutions, wrong scale of y1, y2, that will be non-zero, right? Now consider, according to the option D, y2, x0, x0 is equal to 0, will be y1, 0, y x0, okay? And this is equals to, since y1, x0 is equals to 0, and y2, x0, this is what, what about the value of y1 dash x0 and y2 dash x0? The wrong scale will be 0. But according to this condition, according to this condition, wrong scale cannot be 0. So option B, it is wrong. Now, by discarding these three options, we can easily say that option A is correct. In another way, here given x0, x0 is a 0 of y1, x. Since x0 is a 0 of y1, write this form y1 x is equals to x minus x0 into q0 x. And here given that q0 is continuous and q0 x0 is not equals to 0. Correct option. Going to the next problem. Question number 51. Consider the equation dy dt equals to 1 plus f squared t y t. And y0 is equals to 1. This is the initial condition. And t greater than equals to 0 where if f is a bounded continuous function on closed interval zero open infinity. Then these four options are given. This will have two linearly independent solutions, a bounded solutions, unit solutions, etc. Okay. After all, we have to check the uh, characteristics of the solutions. Okay. So here given that f is a bounded continuous function. So simply if we take that action, ft is equals to zero, and this is a bounded continuous function also, so let ft is equals to 0, then dy dt becomes dy dt is equals to yt. dy dt is equals to yt. So by solving this equation, we are getting yt is equals to c e to the power t, where c is arbitrary constant. 
and the condition is given y is equals to 1 and the solution is yt is equals to e to the power t. Now yt is equals to e to the power t. Number one is this e to the power t, this is unbounded. Okay, so option C is saying that the equation admits a bounded solution. So option C is incorrect. E to the power t will tends to infinity, right? So in option A, this is saying this equation admits a unique solution, unique solution yt. Further, limit t tends to infinity yt exists, but we are saying that uh, uh, this will goes to infinity. So option A, option A is incorrect. Option B saying that this equation admits two linearly independent solids, a unique solution yt, and further limit t tends to infinity yt, this is equals to infinity. Yes, this is a unique solution, and if limit t tends to option D is the correct option. Next problem. Question number 96. This is part C problem, that, that means 4.75 marks, and one or more options can be true. But the question is consider the first order system of linear equations. We are given a system of linear equations, and four options are given about the eigenvalue and eigenfunctions. Option one is the coefficient matrix A has a repeated eigenvalue lambda is equals to one. This A, this A is called the coefficient matrix. Okay, and they are given A is equals to three to minus two minus one. Option B is saying that there is only one linearly independent eigenvector, and the eigenvector is x1 equals to 1 minus 1. And the eigen uh, eigenvectors will be x1 equals to this and x2 equals to this. Option D is the vectors x1 and x2 in the option C, in this option C given above are linearly independent. That means option D is independent on option C. Okay, so let's check the options and solve this problem. Here given dx dt is equals to ax and a is equals to this two cross two matrix and x is equals to this okay so to find out the eigenvalue we have to find out the characteristic equation right so this is our a so the characteristic equation will be three minus lambda minus one minus lambda plus four this is equals to zero and from here we are getting lambda is equals to one one okay that means here lambda is repeating Okay, so lambda is equals to one one. In option A, you can see that given that the coefficient matrix A has a repeated eigenvalue lambda is equals to one. Yes, this is correct. Okay, now check further. Okay, ax is equals to lambda x. From here, we can say a minus lambda i, this is into ax is equals to zero. So from here, we can get that x2 is equals to zero. So from here, if we put x equals to 1 and x2 equals to minus 1, this equation will satisfy. So 1 and minus 1 is the only linearly independent eigenvector, right? So option B, there is only linearly, only one linearly independent eigenvector, x1 equals to 1 minus 1. So option B is correct. Now check next option. dx dt is equals to ax. So x is equals to x1, x2. So by going through this process, 3x1 plus 2x2, this and dx to dt, this is equals to minus 2x1 minus x2, this one, okay? So from here equals to zero, this is equation one, and 2x1 plus d plus one x2 equals to zero, this is equation two. Now we will solve these equations from one and two. From one and two, we can get, if we um, replace x2, okay, so this will be d minus three, multiplying the first equation by d plus one, and the second equation by two. Okay, so we are getting d minus three into d plus one plus four into x one equals to zero. So this is our final form. So the one equals to zero and m is equals to one one. Okay, so the general solution is x one equals to c one plus c two t into the power t, and this c one c two are arbitrary constants. Okay, now from this equation number one, from this equation number one, if we put the value of x1, we can get the value of x2 in the form of c1 and c2, okay? So x1 is equals to, we are getting x1 equals to c1 e to the power t plus c2 t e to the power t, and x2 is equals to this, okay? So what is our eigenvector x figure from this? We are getting x1 equals to one minus one, and x2 is equals to from here, this is t and this is t. And this x1 and x2, both they are linearly independent, okay? so from options, here is the option. Option C is saying that the general solution of the OD is this form, this and x2 is this. Yes, option C is correct. And option D is saying that the vectors x1 are independent. Yes, this option D is also correct. Okay, going to the next problem. 
Question number 92. This problem is from Green's function. And let me tell you, in this problem, there is some mistake in the options. Okay, Th there is no mistake on the given equations or the given, uh, given boundary conditions. There is no mistake. But I think there are some mistake in the given options. Okay, let's see how we can solve this problem. And I will show you that where is the uh, mistake in these options. Okay, before that, let me tell you, according to the option uh, answer key, option C is the correct answer. Okay, so let's check what will be the correct answer. Here the given equation is, and these two are boundary conditions. We have to find out the Green's functions of this problem. Before that, we have to check Green's function exists or not. Now, how we can check this? We have a trivial solution. If we can show that this equation will have trivial solutions, then obviously it will have a Green's function, right? So, first step. In first step, we have to take this from Ly is equals to zero. Ly means that this left-hand side, this is equals to zero. Now to get a integrable form, we, what we are doing, we are multiplying both sides by one by x. So one by x equals to zero. So from here, ddx into one by x dy dx is equals to zero. So if we integrate this, we are getting constant. A is constant, okay? So now again, integrating, we are getting one uh, y x is equals to a x square by two plus b and both a and b are arbitrary constant. If it equals to zero, we are getting b equals to zero and y one equals to zero, we are getting a is equals to zero. So real solutions. Since we are getting a trivial solution, so we can say that Green's function exists. Green's function exists, okay? And the Green's function will be of this, of the y x is equals to a x square plus b and the Green's function will be of this form. So let g x t equals to a1 x squared by 2 plus b1 and a2 x squared by 2 plus b2. In first form, the limit is from 0 to t and uh, in the second form, the limit is from t to 1. Since we know that Green's function is always continuous, that's why here, so we, uh, this is, you have to take a look on this form that this x is in closed interval 0 to t1. Since gxt is continuous, that's why this equality sign is mandatory. Okay, now step two. We know that Green's function is continuous. Continuous at this point is equals to t plus, this is equals to gxt at x is equals to t minus. x is equals to t plus. That means this will be the form. So we, what we are doing, putting x is equals to t. So this is a2 t square by 2 plus b2. This is equals to gxt at x is equals to t minus. So put x is equals to t in this form. This is a1 t square by 2 plus b1. Now simplifying this, we are getting the second equation. A2. What we are going to get by forming these equations? We are going to get the value of these constants a1, a2, b1, and b2. Okay. If we get this, the value of these constants a1, a2, b1, b2, then we can get the Green's functions. But let me tell you, a1, a2, b1, b2, these are not constants. Actually, these are function of t or maybe constant. Okay. So in step two, del g del x, the first derivative, del g del x at x is equals to t plus minus del g del x at x is equals to t minus, this is equals to minus one by p zero t. Okay, so this is the property of Green's function. Now del g del x at x is equals to t plus, going to the, and if we uh, derive this with respect to x, then this will be a two x and this will be zero. So a two x, and we have to put, x equals to t. So from here, we are getting a to t. Similarly, a1 t, and this is equals to minus one. Why minus one? This p0 t, what is of y double dash? Here the coefficient is one. So p0 t, this is equals to one, okay? So we are getting that p0 t is equals to minus one, okay? So a2 minus a1 is equals to minus one by t, and this is our equation number three. And the fourth condition is Green's function always y is equal to zero. So Green's function will satisfy these two conditions. So g0 is equal to zero, is equal to zero, then we will get b1 equals to zero because at the point x equals to zero, you can see at the point x equals to zero, the function is a1 x squared plus b1. But if we put x equals to zero, we are getting b1. Okay. Similarly, to one, we will get a2 by 2 plus b2. Okay. So going to the options here. 
G0 equals to 0, we are getting P1 equals to 0, and G1 equals to 0, we are getting A2 by 2 plus P2. Equations, from these equations, we have to find out the values of A1, A2, B1, and B2. Okay. Now check. In option 2, in equation number 2, here is the form A2 minus A1. And in equation number 3, here is the value of A2 minus A1 from equation 3 to equation number uh, 2. Okay. So, minus 1 by T. So, this will be minus T by 2. And here, from here, plus B2. And B1 is equals to 0. So, we will put B1 equals to 0. So, from equation number 2, 3 T by 2 plus B2, this is equals to 0. And B2 is equals to T by 2. Now, put the value, then we will get the value of A2. And A2 is equals to minus T. Now, from the equation 3, from this equation, A2 is equals to our minus T, then we will get 1 minus T square by T. So, so, we already get the value of A1, A2, B2, and B1. Okay, our Green's function in this equations. Okay, so GXT is equals to A2 plus, plus B2. And A1 equals to 1 minus T square by T. So, if we put A1 equals to 1 minus T square by T, and we are given x square by 2. So, this will take the form x square by 2. So, 1 by 2t into x square into 1 minus t square in the interval, closed interval 0 t. And second one is a2, a2 x square by 2 and a2 is equals to minus t. So, put a2 equals to minus t x square by 2 and b2 is equals to t by 2. Here, b2 equals to t by 2. 2. So, from here, what we are getting? So, this is our Green's function. GXT equals to 1 by 2T x square 1 minus T. Now, if we check the options, in these options, no options are matching our, but in option C, they are given the minus sign. Okay. You also do it in your, uh, you also do this problem and uh, maybe I am wrong in this solution method. So, do it yourself and if there is any wrong, then comment your uh, doubts or comment your suggestions in our comment section. So, going to the next problem. Question number 102. Let d2y dx2 minus qxy is equals to 0. And that this is 0 is equals to 1. Where qx, this qx is, qx is positively monotonically increasing. Okay. Increasing continuous function. Then these four options are given. yx tends to infinity as x tends to infinity, dy dx tends to infinity, etc. Okay. So, how we can solve this problem? Before that, let plus pxy is equals to 0. Now, this px, if p solution that will be of oscillatory type on positive x-axis, if this px is less than or strictly decreasing, so when px is positive, the solutions will be oscillatory type, and when px is negative, the solutions will be either at most 1, 0. At most 1, 0. Okay. Now, check uh, from our given equation, d2y dx2 minus qxy is equal to x is equal to minus qx. Right, and here given that qx increasing continuous functions. Okay, so if qx is negative, that means px. If we are getting that when px is negative, either in solutions. Now, how we can get that this solution will be strictly increasing or decreasing? Here, you can see that y does zero to this is greater than zero, and when this is right, so the solutions are strictly increasing. Now check the options. Option A is saying that y x tends to infinity as x tends to infinity. This option is correct or not? Since y x is strictly increasing, so this option will be correct. And similarly, option B that will be also correct. Okay. Option C is saying that y x and p x is negative when p x is negative incorrect. Y x has infinitely many zeros, so this is also incorrect. So, option A and B, that will be the correct option. Option C and in this video, we have solved all the problems CSI late 2011 uh, December exam. Okay. So, if you like this video, then please share it with your friends and subscribe our channel and stay with us. Thank you.